Harry Potter. Let's keep things simple, shall we? Last time I covered the fundamentally flawed first foray into the Harry Potter Advance lineup, and just as the Game Boy Color got a Chamber of Secrets adaptation, so too did the Game Boy Advance yada yada yada. Okay, look, we're on video number four, folks. At this point, you should be picking up patterns and release schedules. That's all I'm saying. Developer Grip Tonight Games did damn good work improving on the first game back on the GB Color, but was the same story told on the GB Advance? I don't know about you, but I'm really hoping for a good game this time. I mean, last time. Whew, it's pretty exhaustive. Anyway, with all this in mind, Harry... Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets for the Game Boy Advance. The second Potter game on the GBA shares a relationship with its predecessor similar to its GBC counterpart. Same genre, better play. Pretty much all of my complaints about Sorcerer's Stone Advance have been addressed, though the upgrade isn't as pronounced as the GBC's improvements. Like, remember the imps from last game? How they embodied the flawed controls? Well... Yeah. Not really an issue anymore. Apart from instant spellcasting, you can also charge your offensive spells to deal more damage to a much wider gamut of enemies. We've even got mini-bosses this time around. Mode 7 Broomstick Play is introduced, and it's surprisingly intuitive. In fact, the graphics are a lot more vibrant overall, and the character models aren't digitized garbage like last time. Instead of using the Scholastic-inspired art style only for cutscenes, it's now consistent throughout the experience. It sometimes looks like you're playing a Harry Potter picture book, and that's pretty impressive. It's not as much of an improvement as the GBC's second date with Harry, but the refinements are noticed and appreciated. Yeah, you're still going on obstacle courses around the Wizarding World. Obstacle courses, that is still such a hard phrase. Obstacle courses. But your objectives are much more tied to the central plot, and that counts for quite a bit. Look, if I'm going to go explore the Hogwarts library or whatever, at least I'm looking for the book with the Polyjuice Potion recipe, you know what I'm saying? Speaking of context, much like Sorcerer's Stone Advance, Chamber of Secrets is a playable remix of the original plot. Book-exclusive material like Peeves and the Death Day Party make appearances, but just as in attendance are slight variations on the core story. For example, Harry and Ron are never prevented from entering Platform 9 and 3 quarters like in the book and the movie, they just... Uh, miss the train. Like, they're late. No magic intervention, just... Harry ran one too many errands in Diagon Alley, I guess. So it's back to the Weasley house to grab the Angela. Angela? Angila? Whatever. We're still in puzzle adventure territory, but this time the game doesn't wear its Zelda cosplay as prominently. This is mostly thanks to a shift in perspective. Chamber of Secrets Advance is presented isometrically, wherein the player's viewpoint is angled diagonally to add more depth and detail to the environments. If you've played Super Mario RPG on the Super Nintendo or Diablo on the PC, you're already familiar with this graphical style. I normally don't like isometric graphics... at all, but I must admit Chamber of Secrets makes them work. Thank Gryptonite for a lenient control scheme. Harry's movement is not locked down to the diagonal perspective, which is really helpful if you don't play isometric games regularly, like, I don't know, most of the planet? I had a few games of this kind when I was a kid, and I never liked their strict adherence to diagonal movement. Look, when I press up on the D-pad, I want my character to move up, not northwest or whatever. No, 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 no. The controls are not the problem in an isometric wizarding world. No, the real issue is the camera. Yeah, you know, the camera, that thing that 2D games have all the time. Okay, so by camera, I'm specifically referring to the viewpoint through which we experience the gameplay. In all two-dimensional games that feature a player character, the camera is pretty much always slightly off-center, usually favoring whatever side of the camera that character is facing. This is designed for the player's benefit, allowing a better field of vision for whatever obstacle lies ahead. And the same holds true in Chamber of Secrets. D almost. Whenever Harry turns to a different direction, the camera shifts to show about 70% of the environment in front of him. In theory, this makes total sense. In practice, it does not. The camera speed is paradoxically too slow and too active. All it takes is one twitch in a new direction and you are at the mercy of the camera's movement. Sometimes you're blind to what's in front of you, other times you're struggling to keep track of your on-screen location. I'm not really sure why the camera is designed like this. Had it stayed on Harry instead of scrambling ahead, the gameplay would be a lot smoother and uninterrupted. It doesn't break the game, but it breaks the flow, demanding far more patience than necessary. 
And speaking of patience, we have now arrived at the worst part of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets on the Game Boy Advance. It's a part so bad, one of you guys actually warned me about it in the comments of the last video. You know, I appreciate you guys looking out for me like that. And I totally understand where you're coming from. Let's talk about stealth. One of the most persistently bad parts of modern game design that you won't find in a loot box or a pre-order bonus is the ham-fisted inclusion of the stealth genre. You know, when you reach a certain area and the game tells you to navigate your surroundings undetected by the enemy? Suddenly, your momentum stops and you are instructed to move quietly and carefully. Look, I totally get why so many big-budget games include stealth gameplay. It takes a lot of time and money to create in-game environments, and developers don't want players to breathe through every section when they took so much manpower to make. How else are you going to justify 60 bucks in a season pass if I can waltz through the enemy stronghold with a Tommy gun in 10 minutes? Yeah, you could argue it's artificially extending the playtime, and it kind of is inherently, but a couple of stealth sections in a game doesn't bother me on principle. No, 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 what bothers me is that proper stealth mechanics are almost never properly included in these stealth sections. What? Most mainline action-adventure games include some kind of stealth level or area, and it's almost always poorly implemented. Little did I know, HP GBA 2 was pulling this garbage 15 years ago. You spend a significant portion of game time creeping past prefects, felines, and bitter squibs. Holding down the action button initiates a cartoony tiptoe animation, which is... Helpful? I mean, it certainly helps, but you can't really tell because you sometimes have no means of knowing when you're spotted. Sometimes you're right behind a guard and they stop you, other times they don't even notice. Their behavior feels completely random. And even with the weird camera giving you such a wide field of vision, the areas are sometimes too expansive to truly know how to navigate without getting caught. Stealth gameplay requires consistent player feedback so strategies can be outlined and executed. It's how players stay stimulated and engaged in a genre that is known for long stretches of staying in one place and waiting. Sorry, let me just, let me just adjust this invisible game design degree that I totally have. Think about it, nobody would have cared about what happened on Shadow Moses Island if the patrolling genome soldiers didn't have structured and observable patterns to maneuver. Am I right? Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Okay, look, my point is, stealth requires structure, and this stealth does not have it. In all fairness, it's not like there's no way to maneuver the castle halls undetected, it's doable. But when your 20 minute stretch of gameplay is completely undone because Filch spotted you from off screen, you know something ain't right. Chamber of Secrets wants the variety that stealth affords, but doesn't salvage the strategy it provides. The funny thing about all this is that my introduction to the stealth genre was actually the Sorcerer's Stone PC game, which... Man, that is just a whole other video series. <laughs> oh boy. Maybe. It's a shame that a really big part of Chamber's gameplay is so flawed because honestly, the rest of the game is serviceable. I mean, there are some quirks. Selecting spells is kind of a chore and a lot of the environments visually blend together and become unnecessarily difficult to navigate, purely on a directional level. If I'm sounding overly harsh, it's because the good stuff is just kind of standard. Yeah, it is definitely better than Sorcerer's Stone on GBA, but the last time we covered Chamber of Secrets, the GBC game's qualities were so strong, they mostly overshadowed the cracks in the armor. This this time, the plight of Potter the Parcel Mouth is pretty par for the course, so the problems are that much more pronounced. I see where the game works, and I appreciate it, but you're gonna have to do more than that to impress. The same can be said for the music. Look, 8-Bit Chamber of Secrets has a remarkable soundtrack, and as it turns out, the developers agree with me. I know so because 32-Bit Chamber of Secrets is, quite literally, the Game Boy Color version soundtrack, with added layers from the system sound chip. I mean, just listen to this. Honestly, I can't even be mad though. It may be the exact same soundtrack, but that soundtrack is incredible, and I'm not exactly demanding completely original scores in each version of the same licensed game, so it's fine, I guess. And guess what? We're back here again. The music represents the game in a nutshell. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets on the Game Boy Advance is... fine. It's, it's fine.
Yeah, it has its problems, and I don't really think it's as much of an improvement as it first appeared, but on the whole, it's inoffensive and perfectly playable. I wish I had more to say, but that's the thing about games of this caliber. There just isn't much to address. Wait, how long is this video? Now before we get going, I want to put something to bed. This whole time I've been wondering why the Harry Potter Puzzle Adventure game was abandoned in favor of the Harry Potter Portable RPG. And after playing through HPGBA 1 and 2, I think the answer is actually kind of obvious. The Wizarding World just isn't that fun as an adventure. Harry Potter books are a uniquely challenging setting to map to a controller because they're not simply singular adventures. They're entire school years, scattered with moments of narrative importance and character development. The first two books were especially anecdotal, and attempting to turn a string of magical vignettes into one gameplay experience just isn't super enticing. RPGs make a lot more sense for Harry because we're learning magic and spells the same way he is. Chamber of Secrets on GBA is not a bad game, but I totally get why this gameplay was a abandoned in favor of its 8-bit brethren. Which leads us to the climax of this little video series, Harry Potter and the... Disappointing. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Now look, staying true to my word, I have not played this game, I've barely even seen any footage, and actually... Ugh, I haven't even opened the box yet. Seriously, it's been like a year and a half and I still haven't even touched this thing. What will await me within the most popular Harry Potter portable RPG of them all? I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited to find out. So join me in the final installment of Harry Potter on Game Boy. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you know exactly when the last video drops. And before I go, thank you for 1,000 subscribers. It means a lot, guys. Until next time. You know, I might as well just... All right, cool, let's do this.